Hey guys, welcome to another video. We're going to start the section of general physics. So as we take a look at the syllabus content, have a look. Uh, we'll be taking a look at length and time, which is syllabus 1.1, and perhaps motion, which is 1.2. Okay, so length measurement. Uh, you should be fairly familiar with using a ruler, where you pretty much align the start of the object with the zero mark on the centimeter scale, and then you take a look at where it ends. And of course, each of those little units that you find in between the bigger centimeter units are each 0 0.1 millimeters. Uh, sorry, 0 0.1 centimeters, or which is equivalent to uh, one millimeter. So if you take a look um, down here though, it gets a little bit more complicated. It's um, a vernier caliper allows you to measure things with more accuracy than a simple ruler. So what you do with a vernier caliper, and you may have used this in your laboratory experiments at school, is you clamp an object that you want to measure with the vernier caliper. And if you take a look at the scale at the top, it's divided into two different scales. You've got the top scale, which is the main scale. We call that the main metric scale. And we've got the bottom scale. And these measure different things. So the top scale uh, allows you to measure the you know millimeters. Okay, so how you what you do is you take a look closely at the Vernier caliper scale, and you take a look at where exactly the second scale starts off in re relation to the top scale, right? So if you take a look, the zero mark of the second scale is right here. And where does that point to? Well, it points in between the 13 and the 14, right? Because this is one, okay, which is one centimeter, which is also 10 millimeters. And so we've got 11 millimeters, 12 millimeters, and then you've got the 13th millimeter. And right in front of the 13th millimeter, that's where the zero sits on the second scale. So what you can infer from that is that it is 13 millimeters. And you've got some dec decimal points in front that you're going to try to figure out using the second scale. So first of all, we know it's 13 point something. Okay, now the second important thing here is using that second segment of the vernier caliper, which is in measurements of a hundredth of millimeters. Okay, so what that means is each of those little units that you find on the scale represents 0 0.02 millimeters. The reason for that is that you've got only 50 units across, going across like that. And it measures hundredths of millimeters. So basically, you count where exactly the bottom scale aligns perfectly with the top scale. So if you look really closely here, you'll notice that Everything is in slight misalignment except right here. Okay, right here you see that the top scale and the bottom scale aligns perfectly. You've got to find that point. And then you count on the bottom segment how many units across it is. So here you can see that it's exactly 21 divisions. And as I said before, each little unit or each division equates to 0 0.02 millimeters, right? So what that means is we know that it's 13 point something, and then the point something is what you just found, which is 21 divisions, and each division is 0 0.02 millimeters. So if you go 21 times 0 0.02, you get 0 0.42. And you add that on to the 13 millimeters that we found from the top division, and so that's 13.42 millimeters as the final answer, which you can see is uh, more accurate than, than using a simple ruler. The next important thing is the micrometer screw gouge, which is sort of you know the, the same type of measurement as the vernier caliper. Again, you clamp the object onto the micrometer and you clamp it on using the screw thing. You, you see the, you see the handle. You just twist that, and you this the spindle comes along, and you can clamp the object onto the onto the screw gouge. So, 
what you then do is take a look at this thing here. Now, I know it's a bit blurry, but they do zoom it up for you. So this is the main scale, just like the Veronia caliper has a main scale, which was the top segment. Well, this is what you look at first with the micrometer. And if you take a look really closely, uh, this is a zoomed up version of what you might be seeing over here. So what you can see is that we've got uh, these millimeter readings, right? Uh, which is in the vision of the top bit is just the millimeters going from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then 6, 7, 8, etc. The bottom bit is the 0.5, so it goes, you know, top 0, the bottom 0 0.5, the top's 1, the bottom is 1.5, the top's 2, next is 2.5. You see the point. So where exactly does this end at? Okay, so you can see that it's uh, this long one is 5, 6, 7, 8, and the bottom one is 8.5, so we have 8.5 millimeters so far, and it stops. Okay, so we know that it's, you know, 8.5 plus something. Okay, we know that at the very least, this whatever object we're measuring is 8.5 millimeters, but how do we get it, the next level of accuracy from that? Well, then you use the second scale. Um, they call it the thimble scale which is the scale that you see on the right here. And it has a total of 50 divisions, which each equal to 0.01 millimeters. Okay, so similar to the Vernier caliper, this time it's 0.01 millimeter per division, not 0.02. So if you take a look, this is a lot more simpler. You just take a look at where exactly the main scale aligns with on the second scale, and you can see that it's 40. Right, so 40 divisions, and each is equated to 0 0.01 millimeters. So 40 times 0 0.01 is 0 0.4 millimeters, right? So then we originally have 8.5, and then you add it to 0 0.4 millimeters, so the overall length of this object is 8.9 millimeters. All right, a volume measurement would consist of mainly using a measuring cylinder which of course you may have used a lot in your lab and the important thing about using a volume or the important thing about using a measuring cylinder is the idea that you would put the liquid into this measuring cylinder and then you would measure you know depending on the scale what the volume is it's pretty simple but the only thing you really have to be careful of is this thing called meniscus what tends to happen is if you have liquid, okay, going into a measuring cylinder, you'll find that it sort of curves, okay? And so what the idea of a meniscus is, is you have to measure the volume at the very bottom part of that curve, which is called the meniscus, okay? So don't measure the volume from the very top, that would be wrong. Measure the volume from the very bottom of that curve. So let's take a look at this example on the right here, which is less blurry, which is good. And so the measuring cylinder will have markings of volume, which is usually in centimeters cubed, right? So you've got 35, 40 up here. So what does that mean? It's this, this line here is 35, so 36, 37, 38, 39, and 40. That's how it works. So we know that this one is 36 and this one is 37, so it must be between 35 and uh, 36 and 37. Now, if you were measuring from the top of the curve, you'll come up with an answer of 37 centimeters cubed, but that is wrong. Remember, you have to measure it from the bottom of the curve. So if you look at the bottom of the curve, that's midway between 36 and 37. So you would accurately say, well, the volume of the liquid in this measuring cylinder is 36.5 centimeters cubed. Time measurement can be consisted of using an analog watch, which is the non-digital version, of course, or you can just use a digital stopwatch, which is probably what you would mainly use in a laboratory setting. And so basically, you know, as you would expect, you just click the timer, the timer will start, and you stop the timer uh, when you've finished recording the time, and then you can sort of reset that to repeat over and over, depending on what you want to measure. Now, one important concept of measuring things in general is to obtain averages. 
Okay, so for example, if you wanted to measure the thickness of, say, a single sheet of paper, instead of using, let's say, a, a micrometer on a single sheet of paper, it is far more accurate, in fact, to get 100 sheets of paper or even 1,000 sheets of paper, and then you measure the thickness of 1,000 sheets, and then you divide it by 1,000 to get a single sheet of paper. This is what we call obtaining averages, okay? Because that will account for slight variations, perhaps, between the thicknesses of different sheets of paper, and it's overall more accurate. So again, if you were to put that into a formula, the average thickness of a single sheet would therefore be the thickness of 1,000 sheets of paper divided by 1,000. And so that can also apply to other things like when you're calculating the time taken for a single pendulum swing, um, it is more accurate to perhaps measure the time taken for 100 swings and then averaging the results by dividing that by 100 uh, instead of, let's just say, start, starting starting the timer when you start the swing and then click the timer to stop it when the swing is over. That's an example of measuring one single swing, uh, which is less accurate. So again, if you were to put that in the formula, it's the average time for a single swing would be equal to time taken for 100 swings. You divide that by 100 to get a single 